such a big focus being put on men's physical health, underlying emotional issues may be taking their toll on your average Aussie bloke. So is this the case? This morning we're joined by family therapist Karen Phillip and journalist Angela Mollard. It's great to have you both here again this morning. Karen, what are your thoughts about this? Look, absolutely. This is an article that I wrote on a Happy Parenting blog site and it is really important and I think we do, we forget about the men in our life and goodness me, they're 50% of our community and a lot of men will be tough. They'll stand up. They can't go to the mates uh, at the pub and say, oh, look, you know, how you going, mate? Well, you know, I've had this, I've had this problem, yeah, and I'm emotionally overwhelmed and I don't know what to do about it. They'll go, well, mm. you know. But women, they band together. They've got a, a very strong group. They can talk, they can share. Men don't. They feel that they need to be strong and if they do appear to be vulnerable, mm -hmm. then they're weak. Mm. And that's the problem. And they do have emotional issues, like anybody. They're a human being. And I really do feel that we need to support our men, not judge them, mm. and, and assist them to talk and, and get through their emotions, because they do have them. It's I, important. I, I, I had a little problem this morning. I took it to Timmy and, and we hugged it out. And you know, Beautiful. Oh, I think, do you want to talk about it on national talk about it later. Yeah, you know, okay, no, it's yeah. just a private moment. I think I agree completely with what Karen's saying, and I think the talking issue is one. But I love what Brendan Cowell says about this, the yeah. actor. He wrote a book, and he's talked about he has a lot. He had a lot of um, friends commit suicide in their younger years, and he was speaking at a writers' festival recently, and he talks about the word proximity, and I love that word. So instead of let's force men to talk about it. Mm. Just talk about proximity, about being together, about doing things together, about going fishing or watching the cricket or going surfing together. And actually, I think women are very good at spit talking opposite each other and, even and talking, but just being alongside each other is actually a very healing thing. It is, but it's like 80% of the suicides in this country are males. Mm. Yeah. Now that's pretty horrific. And it is a and lack of communication. Huh? It is, but it's, it's a deeper communication. Instead of just talking about football and, and going fishing, which is great, they just really sometimes need to go a little deeper than that and, and figure out what's going on in their private lives sometimes and within themselves. But also, and I think Karen, also seek professional help because as oh, a woman, yes. I am hugely impressed when I hear of a man going yes. to a psychologist or seeing a counsellor. I yes. find that I, I, really uplifting. So, and I think men think that we think they're weak when they do oh, that. And I actually see it as a very huge sign of strength. Oh, yes, yeah. for sure. Yep, yep. Uh, sharing more. Yes, and more sure. deeply. Yep. Now, what about the topic of women rushing syndrome? Um, <laughs> I thought I had it because I heard that one part of this condition is that you start the morning with caffeine and you end the, the day with alcohol. So <laughs> I was a bit worried I might have it, but it's all about hormonal imbalance, anger and stress, uh, predominantly in the fairer sex. What, what do you think? Well, it is, and I spoke about this earlier. What, what happens is that our adrenal glands get burnt out. That um, infringes on the production of progesterone, which women need. It's like our anti-anxiety agent. And when that, um, that experience overcomes us, we become very emotional. We can, we can become aggressive. We can become very tired. So it's not a syndrome. Mm. It is a condition, but it's brought on by poor diet, doing too much, rushing around, being overstretched emotionally as well as physically. And, and never being truly at rest and having that chance to, Absolutely. you know, to And I think the generation of children that aren't seeing their parents relax, I mean, they're growing yes. up not seeing their parents on the sofa, that sort of thing. That said, I think Lisa Curry-Kenny is absolutely <laughs> bonkers to give a name to this syndrome. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, get out true. there, lady. I mean, she's so self-examining. Yeah. Be more attuned to other people. I think being more empathetic. See outside yourself. She's saying that, you know, I love what Annette Sharp writes about this morning. She says, okay. basically, this syndrome should be called, come on, Grant, you should have hung out another basket of washing <laughs> yeah. syndrome, which is exactly what it is, really. Yes. I mean, let's communicate better. Let's talk to the men in our lives better. Let's not take on so much. And let's also look outwards rather than inwards constantly. She and did nail that, that aspect of it, didn't it, Annette Sharp? Because no, it, it yes. is, it's oh, that yes. constant introspection. No wonder you never at Look, rest. We can't yeah. use our behaviour as an excuse no. for something like this. Our behaviour is our behaviour. Simple as that. Now, the Daily Telly this morning reporting on the rise of children, young children with speech impairments. They're citing technology as the reason kids are lacking language skills, allegedly. Parents are forking out big dollars for speech therapy. Um, basically, shouldn't prevention be the solution? I mean, they're saying that they've... They, they're so engaged with technology, the parents and the children, that they're not talking to each other. Well, I, I, I'm a trained speech and drama teacher, and I anecdotally am noticing children are not enunciating how they used to sort of 20, 30 mm. years ago. Yes, this is a real problem because they've got their heads buried in devices. They're not having those 
30, 40, 50,000 words a week that their children are supposed to be hearing. Mm -hmm. And I think then the issue of putting an iPad in front of a child and having the iPad read them a story, which is what parents are using, that doesn't cut it. Mm -hmm. When no, you read nuance, inference, discussion, um, using the pictures to provoke a, a conversation. Yes. Kids need to see our faces, our expressions, how we converse. We've got to get back to but the I don't think, words. I don't think we can blame electronics. It, it is a parenting it's, issue. They're it's a great tool. Exactly, they're yeah. a tool. They're a tool to be shared, to be used. But we can't blame these iPads and, and electronics for the fact that our children are lacking speech and articulation. We can't. That is, that is really wrong and lazy. It's a parenting issue. We need to communicate, we need to talk and exchange, we need to correct our child if they're enunciating poorly. We need to read, as you said, that's what we need to do. Whether or not you do it with an iPad or, or some sort of electronic game, that's fine, that doesn't matter. But I don't think at all it's the result of the children using electronics. I do notice my kids have got a vaguely American come Spanish <laughs> accent. Dora this. Dora. Dora. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, maybe I should talk to them more often. Hey, that would yeah. be good. Yeah. yeah. Go home, have a chat. <laughs> That's a good idea. Thanks very much, ladies. Great talking to you. Thanks, Kev. Back to you, Deb. All right, Cam, we've got some good.